Hi, I'm Carrie with the CPQ experts at Renaissance Tech. We talk a lot about how the customer or sales facing side of our configurator and quoting tool works and looks, but we get plenty of questions about the back end of the tool. So today we're going to talk about that. What do the rules look like? How difficult are they to write? Do I need to be extremely technical to succeed at rules writing? All of those questions we're going to cover today. Um, as always, any additional questions that you might have, feel free to drop those in the comment or reach out to us at contact at renaissancetech.com and we will be happy to help. Let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is actually looking at things a bit backwards. We're going to go ahead and go into our simulator and we're going to select um, a configurable model. All right, so we're gonna select street sign here and we're going to start our interactive configuration. Creating rules for Infor CPQ is not scary. So here we are in Infor's design studio. What we are looking at here is called a rule set. And in particular, this rule set is for the street sign product example that we just looked at on the web. So a rule set is basically an outline of our product, including all of the questions that we want to ask the user, which we do through screen rules. You can see here these little screens. In this case, those are questions that will be visible to the user. So if we go back over to our sign model, we can see here select street sign package, for instance. We return to our design studio screen. We can see package right here. And then once we click on that, we can see our caption or the question that we asked of the user, which is to select your street sign package. Okay, so where does the data come from when it comes to what options are actually available for a user to select from? So we can see here, I still have package highlighted. Over here on the right, you can see I am linking to this option list right here. And so if I go over here, I already have this pulled up. This is the data set that I have uh, when it comes to options available for package. You can see the three that were available to us within the configuration. Now let's say, you know, I want to add a few more options to that. Very simple. I've got an Excel spreadsheet in this case that I'm pulling a few additional options from. Just copy those. This is the beauty of it. Go into the list, paste. There we go. We'll come up with these little um, short value names for these options. And then we're going to adjust the order. The order is just what, uh, what order these options are presented to the user in. So if I put you know, this internal as one, it would come up as the first available option to select from. Now we're gonna go ahead and save this. And then we will head back to our sign configuration jump back in here. And now you can see we've got our three additional options that we just added are now available to us in this model. So the million dollar question, do I need to have some kind of background in programming or be a super technical person in order to succeed at rules writing? And the simple answer to that is no. We typically like to say, if you have a general understanding, know your way around Microsoft Excel pretty well, you're going to pick up on rules writing for CPQ fairly easily. A lot of the concepts are really similar. So different formulas, different functions are going to be extremely reminiscent of what you see in Microsoft Excel. So uh, a good case study of this is me. I have no background in programming or anything like that. But with some really basic training, when I started 
to work for Renaissance Tech um, and some guidance, of course, from some of our experts, along with a lot of practice. Um, I have at least enough of a general understanding to build models for my own demos. One of those was actually our sign model that we looked at today. So um, you don't need to be an expert, uh, just take some attention to detail and I think some general sort of logic abilities as well, just being able to picture, you know, what you want that end product to look like uh, for the person who's going to be uh, moving through that configuration. So last step of this video today, let's just go ahead and write a really simple rule uh, within Design Studio and see what that looks like in action. We'll just do something quickly right now. We're going to create a new option list and we're going to give an option for services for our sign installation. So we're going to give three different options. We'll say basic, we'll say intermediate, and advanced, oops, yep, advanced. We'll change our orders here. All right, I'm going to save this option list, head back to our rule set. Okay, and then we're going to take our screen rule. We're going to add a new one here. It indented here to try to be a part of this uh, screen rule. So we're going to just fix that real quick. And we're going to name this service. To add it to our available options here below as well okay and then so over here on the right we have our options again this is the display what we want the user to see so our option we're going to select service from it and our caption is going to be equals select installation service perfect and then we're going to just link here to our option list. We'll say street sign service. We're going to save. All right, we want to make this a required answer. We want it to be visible. And then we want it to continue when we're done entering our answer to the question. And then let's pick a display type. Uh, we'll just do a simple drop down for this one. We'll say save. All right, and then we're going to go back to our simulator, start the configuration again, just run through this quickly. All right, and there we have select installation service with our three different tiers to choose from. Now, we didn't add any sort of pricing information to those, but obviously that's something that we would want to do, most likely if we're uh, giving this option for service. All right, so there is your dollar store tour of rules writing in Infor CPQ. If there is a uh, need for any kind of support on a current CPQ project that you might be working on, we are the only Infor channel partner that specializes exclusively in the implementation, integration, and support of CPQ. If you're completely new to CPQ and want to learn more about why we are the choice tool for quoting for discrete manufacturers, we are more than happy to help answer any questions you might have. Either way, reach out to us, contact at renaissancetech.com, and we'll be happy to get back to you quickly. Thank you for your time and attention today and enjoy the rest of your week.